Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us in today's webinar. My name is Hiam Yas. I will be your moderator. I am a freight spend manager here at Interlog Group North America. And today we are presenting to you uh, freight spend driving down cost in a data driven world. Just a small announcement before we do get started. Um, there are still people trickling in. If you could please make sure that your microphone is muted, um, that would help uh, greatly. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you who we have today. Um, I, like I said, my name is Hiam. I am your moderator um, for our speakers. We have uh, Jean-Marie Mascarenas, who is our president and owner of Interlog Group. Uh, we have my fellow colleague and freight spend manager at Interlock Services, Bellamy Blake. And we also have um, our guest speaker today, uh, Yaroslav Vandruska. He is the Europe Transport Performance Manager for uh, Air Ocean Express at Schneider Electric. And we'll get into that um, a little bit later. All right. So to start, just uh, would like to go over what we will be going um, into today. We'll do a brief introduction of who we are, Interlog Group. Um, we'll also have um, our data and freight and our Schneider Electric business case with Yaroslav. Um, we'll have John marie go over the linguistic theory in detail, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for a Q&A at the end. Um, and also if uh, during the presentation, if you do have any questions, uh, there is a chat feature here on um, <clears throat> Google Hangout. So if you could please either save your questions all the way to the end or write them in there and we'll uh, get to them all in time. Okay, so just uh, a brief overview of who we are. Uh, we are a uh, company based in uh, France, in Orléans, France, and we have uh, an array of multicultural uh, team members, over 260 of us um, sprinkled throughout the world, um, Portugal, China, India, we're all over. So Interlog Group consists of uh, three different entities. Uh, we serve industries from uh, healthcare and food, luxury goods, automotive, uh, all in between. Uh, we have our Interlog Services, which is our freight audit and payment, which most of you uh, here probably know us for. Uh, we have logistics, which is our uh, control tower, TMS, and then our Interlog Solutions, which is our uh, IT and uh, development teams. Um, so Interlog, our goal is to analyze, synthesize, and uh, translate your data and helping our clients make more strategic decisions um, in their business. And we also have over 20 years of expertise in transportation and information processing, um, and thus we bring you our free spend management. So to go over our, our mission, I would like to hand this over to Bellamy. He is going to wrap up our, um, our mission here at Interlog Group and go ahead and bring us right into our freight data um, presentation. So Bellamy, go for it. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm super happy to be here today and uh, honestly honored. Uh, I didn't uh, ever expect to be uh, in a position where I could talk to so many people and reach, uh, reach them and talk about data. So. Uh, basically, as you can read, our mission is to provide accessible, high-quality, data-driven service. Now, uh, if I could home in really quickly on the word accessible, because everybody has data, but really making it accessible is a key and really puts clients like ours in the control seat. So um, that's, that's nice, but let's start with the beginning of data as we know it. And I really think this will help contextualize some of the... Uh, cool things that we're going to cover, uh, just things that are happening in the industry now and things that uh, are expected to be happening in the future, okay? So the beginning of business intelligence, IBM researcher Hans Peter Loon defines business intelligence as the ability to apprehend the interrelationships of presented facts in a way as such as to guide action towards a desired goal. What does that mean? Um, in English, I, I guess it just means use data to make decisions, right? Um, it sounds crazy, but back then, Data was uh, not really used as much in business. Uh, business was done on hunches, vibes, feelings, um, but that's very different today. And uh, so much so that as early as 1965, uh, the US government decided that they would store all business and personal tax returns, uh, a great boon to probably one of the world's most successful businesses, the, uh, the IRS. Um, so, so yeah, let's uh, move forward to see 
some of the things that it has evolved since back then. Uh, right now, as you probably saw in some of the uh, uh, facts before the show, if you came early, you would saw that one in four invoices have errors. So audit can be very important. Uh, industry standards for audits uh, include auditing rates, uh, documents, uh, making sure that costs are charged to the right cost centers in a given company. Uh, there are a lot of BI tools, TMS, uh, VMIs. Uh, we have some very pretty ones that our clients like that can make data very digestible, um, which is all very nice. GL coding even, um, you know, getting behind uh, a lot of uh, accounting codes that are company specific, all very important things. I would like to highlight some of the things that are either existing today or going to exist in the near future, um, starting with uh, the data, or I'm sorry, digital freight networks. Digital freight networks uh, are just kind of how it sounds. It's a freight network, except when it comes to booking or managing your transportation, uh, you can put down the phones with a digital freight network. Uh, they're kind of uh, solidifying still. Um, they're getting stronger by the year, but right now um, a, a, a comprehensive digital freight network will show you in real time things such as carrier capacity, uh, things such as uh, forecasting and predictive pricing to where they're able to give you prices and, and, and not just quotes, but actual prices based off of history and algorithms. Um, and these machines, if given the right data, and we're going to talk about data accuracy, they can learn and they can comb through billions of possible loads, different combinations and consolidations, um, something that humans just can't do. And just like uh, technology in the past has evolved um, and people don't you know, lose jobs or anything, it actually makes our work more efficient. Um, these are expected to do the same using artificial intelligence and whatnot. The last thing um, that I wanna touch on involving freight audit is environmental protection. Uh, the moving things in a uh, safe way and, and one that takes into account the full economic cost is very important. Um, so these um, a lot of international shipping, a lot of countries are starting to do more environmental uh, restrictions and whatnot. And uh, that that is definitely going to be a big part of freight audit uh, moving forward. So like I said, every company has data, but how can it benefit you or your company? I talked about how uh, data can make labor more productive uh, by decreasing manual processes. Uh, that's one very important way. Um, and it's important to stay on the cutting edge so you can decrease manual processes as much as possible. I know here at Interlog, uh, automation is a very big initiative right now, uh, and it should continue to be that way for the near future. Um, globalization is extremely important because uh, I'm going to touch on this a little later, but companies, they're asked to do business everywhere today, right? And so if you go into that blindly, uh, really, you, like without data, you can really you can really find yourself in a position that you don't want to be in. Um, so getting ready to move forward, but I do want to touch on one more thing. It's blockchain. Um, now, that's that's something that if you dabble in like NFTs or other investments, uh, you've probably heard of it. But if not, essentially, it's a new way to do transactions. It's um, essentially an online system that serves as a ledger. And every transaction is recorded chronologically. It cannot be reversed. It does not belong to a company. It is decentralized and everybody can see a transaction made. And uh, we can touch on that later, but that is surely going to change the way transactions are done. As far as data quality, now that's very important here at Interlog. I know we have certifications and recognitions from the likes of Gartner, uh, SOC, AICPA. Um, so needless to say, that's very important. Uh, different, having different sources of data so that you can always make sure that, you know, one compare against the other is accurate. Data cleaning is uh, something that we actually have naturally here at Interlog. We have multiple levels um, that data is checked. And I think when choosing freight partners, that's actually very important to uh, emphasize is that there are always multiple levels of data being checked. You don't want just one input that never gets looked at ever again. Uh, you want to be able to have machines look at it, people look at it, and data cleaning uh, can really can really make sure that you're actually giving good feeds into uh, you know the decisions you're making, uh, and then harmonization, uh, just making sure that your company specific rules are in 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 tune with the uh, with the the flows and outbounds of different uh, companies that you're working with. 
Thank you. Sorry, fingers got a little, a little nervous. Um, oh, right okay. So <laughs> next up, um, I do want to present um, our guest speaker, Yaroslav Vandruska. We will be going over um, our Schneider Electric business case. Um, Yaroslav from Schneider Electric, a little bit of background. Um, he has been with Schneider for over 10 years, for almost 10 years, um, as the Europe Transport Performance Manager for Air Ocean and Express. He has previously worked with GE as a team leader and transportation buyer um, with a master's in strategic management of purchasing and supply chain from ES, uh, ESCP Europe, and also a master's in international trade from the University of Economics in Prague. Yourself, go for it. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am, and uh, thank you uh, to Interlock team for giving me the opportunity to uh, to present this business case. So I would like to say a few words about uh, Schneider Electric uh, and uh, the experience that we had with um, uh, with Interlock uh, uh, in Europe. Um, but obviously, we don't work with uh, Interlock only in Europe, uh, but also in Asia. Uh, like you can see, like you can see on the slide, uh, also in India and China. I would say Europe is the, however, the the main uh, region where we cooperate together. So, a um, few words about Schneider first. So, um, we are a, a specialist in energy management and automation. We are headquartered in uh, in Paris, in France. Uh, we are a twenty five uh, billion euro company uh, with over one hundred thirty seven thousand employees, uh, out of which uh, over eighty thousand uh, working in uh, supply chain. Uh, and as you can see uh, on the map, uh, our presence is very much uh, global. So our main markets, uh, Europe, North America and, uh, and Asia. Uh, we have over 200 uh, plants and distribution centers uh, worldwide. A um, few facts and figures about the uh, cooperation between Schneider Electric and Interlock in Europe. So we have... In total, uh, 12 uh, Schneider Electric sites um, onboarded uh, on, on Interlock, uh, located in seven different countries. So we, we work together in, in France, uh, but also in the UK, Spain, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, and Sweden. Um, we have over 65 carriers onboarded on Interlock um, for all mode, modes of transport. Uh, it's uh, road transportation in Europe, but also air, ocean, express, and uh, rail. Uh, shipments. Uh, Interlog is processing and auditing uh, around 6,000 invoices uh, per year for us. And in terms of the variety of the flows, uh, I, you can see uh, on the slide that um, it's very much a mix. Um, so we have outbound, inbound, and third party flows. Uh, for road transportation in Europe, um, uh, its main flows are outbound, that is to say, uh, uh, deliveries from our distribution centers in Europe to the end customers uh, in uh, in Europe. Uh, for air ocean, um, it's a bit different. It's it's more uh, of uh, inside group flows, so Schneider to Schneider uh, flows. For ocean freight, it's mostly outbound outbound freight from Europe uh, to other regions, and uh, for air freight, it's mostly inbound uh, to Europe. Um, in terms of the process, uh, and I, I, I try to uh, describe it on, on a very high level, uh, how, how do we work with, uh, with Interlock today? So um, the input to the process is uh, the contract uh, that is typically negotiated by our procurement team. Um, so absolute majority of the shipments follow uh, the, the contract. Um, if the, the contract or agreement is not available for a specific uh, shipment, then it is uh, following a spot quotation process um, that we have uh, that we have uh, introduced. Um, so that that's the beginning. That's the input of the process. And then actually it starts with the shipment booking uh, by Schneider Electric, shipment execution uh, by the carrier. Um, and uh, then on the carrier side uh, by invoice creation and sending of the invoice to Interlock. And that is in the format of PDF um, and in the format of uh, billing file, uh, which is typically a CSV or, or, or Excel file. Uh, that, uh, uh, th those files are then uploaded into, um, into Interlock portal by, uh, by Interlock uh, audit team. Uh, they are processed, um, the audit starts and um, is finished with um, invoice closure and the invoice being put into statement. What I want to highlight is also there are two supporting processes during uh, during the audit. Uh, one uh, is related to uh, the queries that could be um, 
directed to the, the carrier itself. For example, in case of uh, rate discrepancy, overbilling and, and issues like that. Uh, but it could be also Schneider Electric uh, that uh, will be asked by Interlo to uh, approve extra costs, for example. Uh, so it's really a cooperation uh, of all the three parties. And not, uh, no, it's not just Interlo, it's Interlo, uh, Schneider and, um, and the carrier. So if I want to summarize the, the experience that we've had uh, with Interlock in, uh, in Europe, um, I would say it, uh, it has brought the, the invoice control to a uh, standard level uh, uh, across the sites that, uh, that uh, have been uh, onboarded. Um, and it has also given us a possibility to, um, to have uh, the invoice shipment data uh, available uh, through the Interlock uh, web portal. So at any moment, we can go in and download uh, the data ourselves, uh, including the, all the transport manager data. Uh, so like that, we can build our own KPIs related to transport like Euro per kilo and, and things like that. Uh, it, it has given us the ability to measure the invoice processing time. So we know exactly uh, when the invoice was uh, created, when it was sent to Interlock, when the audit uh, started, when it finished. And uh, we have the audit trail in case of any escalations or, or issues. Um, uh, again, that's all through the, the, the Intel web, web portal available to us, but also to the carriers. Uh, the other point I wanted to highlight is uh, early detection of uh, billing discrepancies. We had cases in the past where uh, Procure has made a, an agreement, uh, but um, uh, the carrier, for whatever reason, did not implement correctly uh, the tariffs. Um, so we were we ended up with a situation of underbilling or overbilling uh, and that uh, obviously uh, led to, uh, to, uh, to issues in terms of uh, forecasting of the costs and then uh, extra invoices or credit notes and so on so on so so I think this uh, this is a very good point to, to highlight uh, also double invoice control um, the fact that uh, Interlog is checking whether we are not uh, uh, invoiced twice for the same shipment uh, we, otherwise we would not have a, a tool to, to really control it in a good way uh, and last but not at least, um, uh, I, again, I emphasize the, the cooperation of all the three parties. Uh, so we have um, put together uh, SOPs with between uh, Interlock carriers and uh, Schneider Electric, defining the clear roles and responsibilities as to who is doing what. Uh, and I think that's really helping, um, in the, especially in the situation where we have multiple sites, uh, multiple carriers, uh, following different agreements. So uh, I think uh, to summarize the experience with um, Interlog has been positive. Um, how to take it forward and uh, what are the next steps we are working on? Um, it's mostly around uh, the, um, the, I would say, uh, transport cost visibility as early as possible uh, in, the, in the life of a shipment. So um, we don't want to wait until the carrier uh, sends us the invoice, which could be weeks or months after the shipment happened. But we want to know the costs um, already at the point of uh, the shipment leaving the distribution center. And uh, that's uh, easy to say, not so easy to do. Um, there are a lot of factors, and part of that is uh, linked to what Bellamy said. It's about uh, uh, it's about uh, being able to, to link various data sources um, together uh, and uh, make them talk to each other and and that's uh, that's the challenge that we have at the moment uh, other than that um uh, it's uh, the other actions we are talk we are uh, looking at is complexity of the tariffs for uh, um for our um uh, for our road transportation we've done the the job on the Aero Ocean and express um, um that is fairly uh, standardized for road transportation however there are especially in europe there are a lot of uh, varieties of, of agreements uh, that follow the price per kilo, price per loading meter, price per pallet, and so on. So the ambition is really to, to harmonize all that uh, exactly to make the, the, uh, the transportation costs uh, more uh, predictable. And that would then help us uh, to improve the accuracy of accruals, and it would help us to improve the accuracy of the rolling forecast. Um, and I think these these actions are ever more important now in the environment where that is super inflationary uh, for all modes of transport. We can see that the tariffs are increasing. Um, last year it was air freight 
this year it was uh, sea freight uh, and uh, and due to the shortage of the drivers in in europe uh, it's it's uh, road freight as well so um we are in a, in a situation where the tariffs are not stable but they are they vary a lot uh, the uh, uh, agreements are being renegotiated frequent more and more frequently uh, so uh i would say with the help of interlock we get we 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 manage to get the cost under control but in order to move to the next step uh we would like to be um we would like to improve uh, the the look ahead of what's coming and what we can expect so um i would say that's the that's the main points uh, i want to i want to mention today perfect perfect thank you so okay. much Yaroslav. um i really appreciate you being here and and going over all that um so next up, um, I do want to introduce John Murray. Uh, he will be going over uh, the linguistic theory. Um, John Murray, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Jan, and thank you, Yaroslav. So I'm going to give you some uh, kind of information and insight about our business freight span management, and through uh, the approach that we define uh, as the uh, linguistic theory. Uh, first, a little bit of history about our business. Uh, the, our, our business was originated in the 80s in the U.S. called as a freight audit, which uh, consisted in checking, as many uh, of you know, the freight deals of the new uh, country dealing with parcels uh, after the U.S. postal monopoly was uh, challenged by the private industry. So it started all about checking invoices. Uh, but our business is much more than that. So when I was... Uh, long time ago in the 90s working with uh, Sid Robinson, uh, they decided to onboard this uh, new uh, division dealing with the freight audit, uh, considering that was even in those days that data was strategic. And But I kept hearing uh, in those days that the uh, business would vanish at some point and be replaced by some automated process based on the new uh, e-technology, and that uh, never happened. So uh, why did it not happen with transportation and it happened in other functions? It's really because transportation is, has got a very specific, unique position in the economy. Uh, when you think about it, it's the only uh, economic uh, function which uh, connects different uh, economic entities. And that's the key point uh, that makes us strongly believe that we've got a sustainable business that ERPs cannot touch, that uh, no uh, core business organization can touch. The, uh, and the, one of the consequences, and we can move to the next uh, slide, is that uh, I control this, I don't think so. Uh, so uh, the, um, the, the, the key point here is that we see uh, that any uh, economic organization, as any human organization, has got its own uh, language, is no its own lex lexicon, you would say. Uh, and when you try to uh, shift from one entity to another, you leave a universe and you reach another one at the uh, delivery point. So, and the carrier will be focused with its own uh, codes its own language dealing with mostly transportation. So uh, it's always a gray zone. Each uh, ERP, each uh, system will be dealing with uh, the core business of the uh, industry, but will not be able to touch the, uh, the only uh, economical function which connects different entities, which is transportation. And that's about what we call this linguistic theory, which means that uh, we, it's impossible to reach the function uh, with an industrial approach focused on uh, the uh, industrial actors. So that's why um, over the years and the decades, we see that uh, this freight span management business is a sustainable business. It's even growing and getting more and more structured. Uh, we are getting more and more competitors, which is a good sign. And we deal with uh, data mostly to um, deliver the best purchase price, best purchase level, as well as the best 
technical organization for transportation. We also are challenged by some other position and each one can have its own, of course, views on the business. We have our own view and we know that to deliver free span management, we need, of course, to have some professional TMS. Some uh, customers, and we had a very good presentation with uh, Yaroslav, about the collaboration we have been ha having with uh, Schneider since uh, 2007 now. And uh, by the way, India has reached the level of activity of Europe. So uh, Asia is growing uh, very fast. And uh, uh, when we began with Schneider, there was different schools. It was 15 years ago, right? so it's history now. And uh, as uh, many as you may know that Schneider is a technical uh, company, high-tech tech company. And uh, so one of the approach was to try to automate uh, freight span management and through uh, an approach of transport management system. And we see that uh, it converts uh, eventually to uh, outsourcing the service because even a TMS cannot deal with this uh, function and the uh, ultimate uh, conclusion, and that's our business, and we catch those opportunities, is to uh, manage uh, on a day-to-day -day base uh, all the freight span from the customer order to the pay payment of the, uh, the invoice. And to also show that uh, the difference of culture and language key to our success in our business, is uh, to give some, uh, I would say, negative examples. Uh, in the years, uh, in the early years of the, our company, we were uh, consulted to manage uh, other uh, span uh, management, such as uh, checking uh, bills of raw materials, of uh, general materials, uh, phones, and uh, rental cars, hotel bills, or whatever. That was not our core. That was our customers coming to us. And it was never successful. Audit of other uh, functions uh, do not work as an outsourced business model uh, because uh, our, uh, all our customers can do uh, the same job uh, with the same level of service internally. So really, it's because transportation lies in between you as our customers that we've got this sustainable business. And we need to have two um, qualities to uh, be successful in this business. It's, of course, expertise in transportation and data management. So this expertise is basically about IT. That's why we've got an IT uh, company. Uh, it's about data management and freight audit and transport organization. That's about expertise. And complementary to the expertise, we need to be uh, trusted as an independent uh, provider. And uh, we'll also give you another example, very uh, interesting uh, that uh, I caught by uh, well, surprise uh, in a show in uh, Florida, it was about 10 years ago. It was a show where there was nothing much to see, so I put the uh, hang around. And I met a company who was doing the exact same work as we were doing, checking freight bills, uh, ensuring that uh, everything was right for the freight spam uh, invoicing uh, on the carrier side. And uh, I will not name the company, but uh, and so we said, well, well, both of us are doing the same, exactly the same business. They are checking and making sure that the bills are uh, pr properly uh, produced. And on the other end, we receive the bills and we check everything again. And why? Because it's a matter of independence and trust. So the, uh, the, the, the position we want to reach because we believe long-term that that's our business, it is not to only to be recognized as an expert, but uh, organization being independent and ethical so that we can certify that the freight span is properly processed. And that's why also uh, we consider carriers as customers, as our industrial customers. We are here to uh, ensure this freight span management so that it's 
efficient. It's not a matter of being aggressive on prices or whatever. It's to deliver an efficient uh, service. So that's the uh, that's our belief. Now we've got uh, several um, categories of customers in our company uh, with different views. Uh, uh, I spoke about Schneider in 15 years ago, uh, sharing a TMS uh, vision with outsource service vision. We also have um, uh, some uh, customers who, who are uh, valuing more freight audit and less uh, data visibility. Uh, so, of, of course, we welcome all customers who are seeing uh, their interest in part of the global business as we are trying to, uh, to, uh, to approach. But, uh, of course, uh, we also see uh, long term that progressively this function will um, our customers will uh, buy the the whole band of free span uh, management so that's uh, what i wanted to basically to share with you today about this business of free span management which have been um, kind of uh, questioned over the years and uh, since the 80s and 90s and that we see today becoming mature uh, and on a global scale. So here this slide is summarizing what, how it starts usually uh, by attracting customers and how the, the market started uh, 30 years ago about checking meals. Then the next step, of course, is to uh, extract the data. And the ultimate position is to produce value with the data. And uh, that's basically uh, what we uh, aim to deliver to our, our customers. Thank you. Thank you so much, John Marie. Um, okay, I think that pretty much brings us towards the uh, summary. We are not done yet. I know we have um, some questions I saw come up, um, and we also have some questions from beforehand. But just to quickly go over um, our summary and what uh, everything that was talked about today. We had our uh, Bellamy going over our freight audit evolution, benefits and the quality of our data and how we use that data on a global scale, uh, which is where we brought in Euroslav and uh, his business case with Schneider Electric um, and how uh, data has helped him uh, through Interlog data has helped him uh, control uh, the cost for uh, Schneider and uh, just pretty much uh, bring every uh, house all the data in one area so you can have a better uh, view of it. Um, and then finally, we had John Marie just now go over our linguistic theory and what it means in terms of service and how it uh, comes up pretty much in our daily lives in transportation. Um, so with that being said, uh, we would like to uh, challenge all of our uh, viewers and attendees to change the way that uh, you do transportation and to consider uh, how data can be important. I mean, we all use data, we all know how it works, but there's there's just a lot more to uncover. Um, and we don't know what we don't know, so it's time to start learning and changing things and start questioning a little more. Before we get into our q and I would just like to quickly give you, um, uh, I'll leave this slide up, but I do want to offer, uh, if you could please follow us on social media, we have our LinkedIn and Facebook um, and our website. All the support really helps um, and we appreciate every single one of you for attending. Um, so I'll leave this up here um, and open the floor to any questions. Um, I did see one initially that came through in our uh, little chat. Um, I have a question, I believe this is for Yuraslav. Uh, it says, at Schneider, do you have a unique central purchasing team for all your countries or is it located in each country slash site? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, the answer is uh, yes, the purchasing function is verticalized in our organization uh, and depends on the mode of transport. So the, the international flows, that is to say air and ocean, are negotiated at the corporate level globally. And uh, for road transportation and road agreements uh, in Europe, we have a Europe uh, team looking after um, around this region. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I have another question that was asked earlier uh, during the registration. It says, how do you choose your data analytics tools? Um, 
and I'll open that to either Bellamy or Jean Marie if you uh, would like to chime in. How do you choose your data analytics tools? Yeah. Um, if the question is, I guess, like, uh, like what, what, what advice should you take in order to choose your data analytics tools? I would say, really, just uh, familiarize yourself with the demands of your company and also your clients, um, because data analytics tools, uh, as we kind of covered, they're rapidly changing, and there's a lot that do a lot of new things, and uh, there are some that aren't as robust. And uh, with data analytics, I would say. Uh, if you want a more DIY approach, you should know that. You should know if you want to just be able to go onto a dashboard and do everything yourself, or do you want uh, something that's a little more, you know, perhaps predictive, like it'll send you a report set you might not even know you need. That's also very important too. And uh, I'd say just always keep well or stay well researched so that you know uh, if so there's something better that exists. And if so, are your freight partners aware of them? Are they are they uh, making sure that they're knowledgeable about the market? So I'd say um, that's the advice I'd give to anybody looking to uh, find a data analytics tool. Thank you, thank you. I was gonna I was gonna say the same thing. Okay, um, I have another question. Uh, it says worldwide we see a development from semi paper invoicing to a fully data driven invoicing process, e invoicing. How is Interlog anticipating on that change regarding country regulations, process control, or output data quality? And yeah, I think, uh, go ahead. We're gonna see oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I would say we're already ahead of that curve. Um, our preferred uh, methods of receiving invoices happen to be EDI, um, but we are also, we stay flexible because as you kind of pointed out, um, it's still developing, right? Like a lot of paper invoicing can certainly still happen, especially here in the U.S. Uh, uh, there's a lot of small carriers um, with competitive pricing that people might want to book and they don't do e-invoicing. Um, they might only do papers. So um, we, we stay open to, to both. However, um, as far as anticipating the change, I would say it's already been anticipated uh, and and we're, we're, we're definitely, uh, and, and, and again, we, we stay um, current on our uh, certifications and, and, and recognitions um, in order to make sure that we have the capabilities, that we are doing the most accurate data possible because as things advance, uh, your data inputs and their accuracy become even more important uh, as machines are learning to do uh, some of the things that we used to have to do on our own. So, Thank you. Thank you for answering that. Um, also, uh, for any of the attendees, um, feel free to unmute and uh, ask any questions uh, if you have them. Um, we'll want to keep this a little more discussion. I know we're a little ahead of schedule uh, for our Q&A. Um, I do have some other questions that uh, have stacked up from the, uh, the registration. Uh, I have, do you analyze financial data or do you also look into, or do you also do uh, operational data? I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I, I didn't hear the question. Can you say that one more time? Oh please? yeah, sorry about that. Um, it says, do you analyze financial data or do you, uh, do you also look into operational data? So difficult question to understand, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I guess it means uh, for financial data, I, I guess I can take a stab at it. Uh, we do, add, I mean, financial data, meaning uh, your costs, your uh, the transportation cost and or uh, the other charges and fees and pretty much any any number with a dollar sign next to it. Um, that is something that we house mm -hmm. and uh, need to keep track of. Uh, and it's it's also like you got to keep up with with what you know if you know that there's a certain charge and there's an outlier um, it helps to keep up with uh, trend and keeping track and this is where the expertise and knowledge comes in because there's uh computers can catch trends and they can do that but it also needs uh kind of a human touch to see the data and look at it to make sense of it instead of just having a computer spit out a graph and it's like okay that's great but what does that mean um and that's where the the personal touch comes in to Kind of understand uh, the financial data and also report it and uh, go over it. See what what does it mean? You know, is the higher number always better or or no? So it's uh, if I could add too, uh, yeah. There's also operational data that we capture too, and uh, especially the more integrated we are with a company, like if we have uh, VMI uh, services for a company or whatnot, we 
can capture uh, data regarding inventory. So you can find out your inventory turnover. Um, and even if you do it internally, having multiple data sources, as we touched on, is very nice too, because you always have something to check against. Um, so yeah, that's some of the operational. I wanted to touch on that too. Perfect, perfect. Um, I also have a question um, on the chat. It says, I'm a student and interested to know what reporting is available for a freight payment customer? It's a good question. Uh, Bellamy, you wanna go for it? Um, I see John Marie's unmuted. I don't know if- uh... <laughs> Oh, uh, on him for a second. <laughs> which kind of report? Um, we've got a uh, specific report from our uh, internal tools and we have also reports coming from my from BI tool. So, well, a wide range of reports are available. Do we have the student online who uh, asked the question? Maybe a um, student can be a more specific question. Um, I think um, they're still online. Um, I, I can't see. Are you shy, maybe? <laughs> Um, Sophie, I, I'm not sure if Sophie's still here. If you are, uh, Sophie would like to hear more from you. I guess my answer to that question is what kind of reports um, don't you want? <laughs> um, it, it's kind of narrowing down what field uh, do you want to see versus you don't want to see. Is there, that's really it, because everything is, uh, I mean, uh, I, I heard Bellamy say this earlier, uh, a computer only knows what you teach it, so you, you got to tell it what you want. So what or tell it what you don't want, and then it can filter out the rest. Uh, so that's really it from, from accruals to uh, daily reports to uh, by location, by shipper, by uh, volume. Um, it, it really depends on uh, what you need. Uh, that's, it's, a, it's a very broad question, but uh, I guess the answer is uh, all, all the above. And, and the value of the latest tools uh... Uh, lies in the uh, approach of uh, multi-dimensional uh, database. Uh, when we uh, used our BI tools uh, like uh, Preview, Pixens, or Cognos, the, um, the, the nice thing about those tools is that we can instantly uh, view data in different directions uh, for existing uh, being aware of those uh, uh, theoretical approach we have a uh, multi dimensions uh, which uh, really makes the uh, data uh, base very uh, very powerful so the um, that's why also bi is becoming a, a domain of high experts to design those hypercubes but once the design has been done uh, then the tool is available to uh, anyone from the transportation organization uh, without uh, requesting and needing any uh, high level skills about uh, the AI. I hope that answers to the question, partially at least. It does, it does. Thank you. Um, and I think I have one more. Um, how do you guarantee the quality of your data? Oh, we could speak uh, for hours about quality of data. <laughs> yes, we, we could speak for our quality. Um, and I think that that goes with our uh, the certifications and the uh, for, you know, uh, respectable logistics companies that uh, uh, are handout certifications for quality of data. Um, Bellamy, I think you had mentioned uh, Gartner, um, the AIS. Uh, AICPA. AICPA, yeah. there you go. Some of letters. <laughs> One of those letters. <laughs> but that doesn't tell anything about uh, how we ensure. Uh, right. And it shows that we are, as a company, uh, at a high level of quality, but it doesn't say how. And the how um, comes from different areas. Um, human uh, performance is never perfect, so quality of data is never perfect. And uh, we are working and we've been working for the year about increasing the quality, uh, mostly by the automation process, integration, uh, e-invoicing, uh, e-billing, uh, shipment data. Uh, we moved uh, from a very manual industry three years ago to now uh, process 99, market is processing about 99 uh, 
percent for its span uh, by uh, well uh, computer e files uh, billing files and shipping shipping data and automated reconciliation between uh, all the uh, contractual data uh, invoicing and shipping data so that's yeah. uh, it's a process uh, still going on if i could add to just uh Internally, I, I can share something that we do at Interlog that uh, I think is important to find out if your freight partners are doing. We also audit ourselves. So not, not only do we audit carriers, but we actually audit internally to make sure that our audits are going correctly. So even though we do have automation um, and where we can do the, a lot of the calculation uh, things just with computers, we still want to have a second, third, fourth level of checks. So perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, I have one other question. Um, it says, if I want data, I have to go to Interlog's web portal. Is it possible uh, to have data interfaced from Interlog to the client? Um, if I'm understanding that correctly, um, I think the question is um, that you have to go to the portal to access our data. Um, is it possible to have the data, I'm guessing, interfaced from Interlog to client? So us sending it to our clients and we we have, um, if, if I'm understanding the question correctly, please feel free, um, thanks Ahmed, um, to correct or write something else uh, to uh, maybe correct what I'm saying. But uh, we, we have standard, uh, the reports can come to you. They, they can be set on a schedule. Uh, we have a bunch of scheduled uh, reports that go out uh, from everything from daily to weekly to monthly to annually. Uh, it really depends on what you want to see and uh, uh, we were open to suggestions. Um, we we won't say no. We will say, let's let's see what we could do and, and go from there. Um, so any report on the portal can definitely come to you directly. Um, just got to check with your freight spend manager and go from there. Um, and I think Sophie said thank you and congrats to the speaker. Oh, thank you, Sophie. Thanks, Sophie. If you're still here, privileged to be here in front thank of uh, global just audience and speakers and everything. So thank you. And you're welcome. <laughs> on, on the last question here, I'm from uh, Ahmed. I wanted to say too, um, it's it, it. I think if we do understand the question correctly, of course, uh, that it is uh, very possible. Uh, in in what way it depends, but I think that's also why John Marie and uh, and partners uh, started Interlog Solutions and just the IT wing of the company, uh, so that in case we did have a client that did specifically want to have something interfaced in a way that is unique um, and tailored to that client. It's more than possible, even if it doesn't exist already. That's, that's the, that's the best part about uh, evolution is uh, we're all, we're evolving too. We're, we're not set in our ways. We're, we're continuously uh, moving forward. And what we're doing now, it's probably not the same from what we had a couple of years ago. So we, we keep, we, we keep our base the same, but we also evolve and, and follow all the, the new trends in technology and keeping up with uh, the rest of the market. Uh, so I guess that's the best part about, uh, about that is it's always uh, changing and uh, we're always adapting. Okay, well, that's that's good to hear. This is Ahmed, uh, actually. <laughs> uh, the the problem that I'm running to in these days is we have a lot of data. We, are, we have about nine or ten locations that are all running through Interlog. And when I want to download data to do some analysis or to process it in our own BI tool, it's quite difficult to do to get such a large amount of data. So I was always thinking, why can, can't be interfaced to us and we can directly upload it and process it in our BI tool? Right, right. No, that's, that's a very good suggestion. Um, I feel like we, we can definitely take any type of data and uh, present it in a different way. Um, was there, we, we can definitely touch on that. Uh, more. Um, as far as having an interface, it seems like something that would have to be uh, addressed a little more intimately. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, as far as is it possible? Uh, yeah, we do have the IT wing and the capabilities. Uh, we Again, I'm not looking at it. Um, so I, I don't want to, you know, write a check that someone else has to cash. But, you know, we, 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 we should, uh, we should be able to work on that. Uh, if you address it with uh, your freight spend manager or we're looking at with Ludovic. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, you're in, you're in very good hands then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, then I will address it. Uh, Ludovic can see what the possibilities are because it would help us a lot uh, mm -hmm. and make our processes quite easier. Oh, absolutely. See, this is these are the kind of suggestions that 
uh, we, we, we should head more of, you know, just, just let, keep, keep telling us how to improve and how to evolve. And that's, yeah. that's how we keep going. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you very much. For sure. Thank you too. <laughs> of course. Okay, let me see if I have any questions. I do. That actually brings me into um, another question and it could possibly be one of the last, depending on um, how long it takes to answer, but it says, do you keep historical data available? Uh, to your own clients, and it says, "Clients are open to you." Yeah. So, do we? How long do we keep historical data? Um, John Marie, is it uh, ten year? How long do we uh, keep it? I know it's uh, usually contractually it's three years. Three. Yes. Be longer. Yes. Uh, but we have uh, three years. But we also house uh, historical data. So, if there's any uh, historical data that the uh, said client would uh, like for us to house and use for trends and or uh, uh, if any forecasting measures, then definitely uh, historical data can go back as, as long as the company wishes. But yeah, do you have any other questions or, sorry, Bellamy, were you going to add something? Oh, no, 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 I was, uh, okay. didn't mean to unmute it. <laughs> that's how, that's how I know. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So if, if we have any other questions from our, our audience, if feel free to type them out or uh, go ahead and just please speak freely. We want speak freely. We'd like this to just be an uh, open conversation. Um, let me see if I have any more questions from our registration. I go actually ahead. wanted to, um, I was surprised uh, not to hear anything on blockchain because uh, I found the, per personally, I found the concept a few months ago when I learned about it. I found it kind of well, one interesting, but a little confusing. Um, so if there were no other questions, did you have any more? I was going to maybe fill the rest, some of the time. I, I would like you to, um, I think we, me and you, we, I mean, we really wanted you to go into um, a little bit of blockchain. We didn't have a lot of time um, oh, okay. when you were doing yours. So uh, yeah, please let, uh, go for it. Yeah, um, the only reason I really want to touch on this, and I think it's relevant to uh, data and transport and perhaps even driving down costs is because, um, it's, it's, it's really just a new way we've never really had in order to do transactions. Uh, if, if in case anyone's new, I guess I'll repeat it, but I'm sure those who are here do remember when I said blockchain is a ledger. It's a ledger that does not belong to a company. It is for the world to see, for all users, and it is permanent. So that transactions cannot be reversed. Details cannot be changed. How can that affect freight? Well, in a market that takes advantage of blockchain, one of the advantages come from the client side that uh, quotes or, or, or anything that might, might seem different, like a, a, let's say a company gets a quote from a carrier and the trans transaction is recorded on a blockchain. Well, you would not be able to then give a quote of a different amount to someone doing a very, very similar move because that it's public information. The data is not controlled by the carrier and it's, it's, it makes harmonization almost a default. Uh, harmonization today has to occur when two companies communicate or three or four or however many, uh, they communicate and they have uh, just all their data linked. Well, for when the world has transactional data to view, uh, then it's almost like the world is, has their business links together. It's all, it's all harmonized globally. Um, so I just, you know, I don't have all the answers or the forecast to tell you how that can change things in the next five, 10, 15 years, but it is definitely something to keep eye on, at least as something that we've never seen before, if not as something uh, to, to, to actually be practicing in the future. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Bellamy. Um, I, I, I think we're going to just about wrap it up here. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending. Um, please note that we do have another webinar on November 9th. Um, so look, look forward to seeing um, any invitations in your mailbox. Um, and we would definitely appreciate uh, attending and all the support. Um, uh, hit us up on our uh, the social medias that we have um, on our next slide right here. Perfect. And uh, yeah, uh, just Thank you again for all of our speakers, Jean Marie, uh, Yaroslav, Bellamy, and um, yours truly. My name is Hiam Yas. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for attending. And we will uh, see you all soon. Thank you. And everyone who emailed, thank you for the questions too. Yes, thank you very much for the questions. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care.